Good morning from San Diego. This is Dr. Rutledge, and I'm going to talk to you today about the mini gastric bypass, but not just the mini gastric bypass. We're going to talk about the techniques, the mechanisms that makes the MGB successful, and you can do this at home. We'll also talk about a $10,000 drug that causes weight loss that's recently been approved, and you can get that for free every morning with your steel cut oats. So stay tuned. I'm going to go ahead and start my uh, screen sharing here. Okay, so we're going to talk about bile reflux, the question and the answer. Now, there's lots to talk about, about what to eat and when to eat, things like that. But today we're going to talk about people who have a particular problem, as well as those who have a threat of the problem. And uh, it's going to be a question, what about bile reflux? Does it happen? How does it happen? How do you fix it? And the answer, which is, how do you fix it and how do you prevent it? And so also we're going to talk about the paradox of bile reflux, because a lot of people who have the sleeve and have the MGB have it. And we're going to say, well, in part, it's from the surgeon and the technique, and part it's from the owner. So it could be the car that you bought, or it could be the driver. And some people say it's common, other people say it's rare, and we'll try to tease all of that out this morning. So we'll get started. Now, uh, look, there are a lot of goofballs on the internet, and uh, that doesn't mean that they're your doctor. I don't recommend that you have your medical care by some goofball on the internet. Hmm, where are you watching this? Oh, right. I'm on the internet. So this is not professional advice. It's not for diagnosis or treatment. You should talk with your doctor about the things I bring up here. Of course, I do provide medical care to people individually. And if you want to get my consultation, please feel free to call me anytime. But this is not making me your doctor by watching this today. Don't watch something on YouTube and then decide that's how you should have your medical care. Talk to a real doctor. Okay, reflux, why it happens, how to prevent it, and how to resolve it and prevent it happening post-op, whether you have an MGB or a sleeve or just the way God intended it. Your gut can have trouble, and we're going to talk about it and how to stay out of trouble in just a few minutes. And my way of thinking about this that causes me a chuckle or two is come with me if you want to live, Arnold in Terminator 2. So our idea here is that although it will take some time and there's a lot of somewhat complex stuff, we hope it'll be fun and entertaining and uh, maybe give you a better life. So stick with us. So MGB and gastroesophageal reflux disease are just reflux. What causes it? What's the treatment? How to prevent it? So prevention versus treatment. So we'd like to talk about that. We'll talk briefly about surgical errors, but today's talk is more for patients. And we'll talk to you about selecting a surgeon who uses the MGB's original technique, as opposed to some surgeons who get a lot of reflux. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but mostly it's gonna be talking about people who either don't even have an MGB and might wanna get some tips and tricks of why they're having reflux, and also for those people who have an MGB and going, why do I have reflux, even if I had a superb surgery? So we have a lot to get through and it'll take some time. So maybe you'll watch this in pieces, but uh, that's our goals for today. And I hope you'll find them uh, met successfully. Um, I'm happy to point out that I'm now working with Dr. Elan in uh, Tijuana. We have offices in San Diego and Tijuana. It's uh, the new International Center for Laparoscopic Obesity Surgery. And we offer, of course, the MGB original technique with me and also the sleeve. And we're working to offer the new MGB2, which uh, if you're interested, feel free to email me and you can get in touch with me anytime. My email address is here, it's three letters, DRR, and then it's CLOS.net. And uh, just a note that it's been about 24 years ago since 1997 when uh, I did the first MGB. And uh, when I first presented it in uh, the American Society of Bariatric Surgery, there were dozens, uh, tens and tens of people who stood up and said it won't work. It's gonna be bad. And now it's used all around the world, including throughout the United States, although the American bariatric surgeons still fighting to prevent it from being covered by insurance. So people have to pay out of pocket and that's because of the American bariatric surgery group. Anyways, um, 
one of the things we recommend before you make any decisions about bariatric surgery is talk to post-op patients. And uh, you can talk to thousands of my patients who are now 10, 15, and 20 years after their surgery. Um, and they're available on the internet, uh, but particularly on Facebook page, we have uh, several thousand MGB patients who are up to 20 years after the first surgery. Um, if you're thinking about a sleeve or a lap band or a Roux-en-Y, you might go and talk with them. And uh, there's a particular Facebook group page where my patients are. It's facebook.com groups, mini gastric bypass, but there's another one for unfortunate and tragic outcomes. And that's called, uh, unfortunately, face or um, weight loss surgery ruined my life. So if you want to see some of the bad outcomes that can occur, that might be a place to visit. So understanding how the MGB works. So what we like to say is don't go against the MGB. Work with it to do better. Go against it and you're going to get punished. And that's true of your normal gut as well. So what we're going to talk to you about the MGB today will have applications that we'll talk about for you if you're watching this and you don't have an MGB, if you have a sleeve or a Roux & Y or a lap band, or even if you don't have any surgery at all. We're going to talk about a lot of topics where the research shows you can do better. Like tip now, even before we get started, eat more fiber. Okay, you could turn it off and you've gotten a really good benefit already, but eat more fiber. Okay, that's just one thing we'll talk about today. Okay, <clears throat> so here's my fable that I tell a lot of my patients who are having trouble, either with, as I say, no weight loss surgery lap band, sleeve, Roux & Y, MGB. And I say it's the problems of the expensive new car fable. And I, it's in short, they we're saying is it's gonna be trouble if you drive the car backwards. So let me tell you the quickly the fable, which is imagine that someone goes to buy an expensive new car and they get it home and they're very disappointed because it keeps crashing. Well, that's very upsetting. Let's imagine that the patient or the new owner of the car calls the uh, car dealer and says, hey, I'm really upset. I'm angry. I'm disappointed. I've spent all this money and the car keeps crashing. And so, of course, we hope that the uh, salesperson would say, oh, my goodness, my apologies. Bring it in and we'll see if we can't fix it or find out what's wrong. So in my fable, the new owner brings the car in. And uh, they get in the car to take it out for a drive. And the salesperson notices that the new owner is driving the car backwards. Similarly, if you have no weight loss surgery, lap band, sleeve, ruin Y, or MGB, if you don't know how to drive the car, you're likely to have reflux problems. And so we're going to give you tips and pointers to explain how these things work and then what to do so that you can turn the car around. So that's my little analogy. Many people who have reflux have reflux just because they're driving the car backwards. So research shows drive the car backwards, you get reflux. So all we have to do then is turn the car around. You have to understand, though, which way to point the car and how the MGB works to cause and force weight loss. So the MGB is pretty powerful. And if you go against it, we say that's a little bit like driving the car backwards. And this has value for those of you who are listening who have an MGB, but it also has value to those of you who have other operations or don't even have an operation because the mechanisms of avoiding reflux with your MGB and the mechanisms of avoiding reflux without the MGB are the same. They're just a little stronger. Okay, reflux. In patients without surgery, the sleeve, mini gastric bypass, and other operations, understanding of the causes and prevention and treatment leads to better outcomes. Okay, so that's what we're talking about today. You have GERD, no matter why or what, frequent heartburn may mean you have gastroesophageal reflux disease, which can lead to really serious problems. And here's some data from Canada. Here's the thing, wait a minute. Everybody in Canada has reflux. In other words, one out of every six people, if you're walking along, like I can see out my window here, people walking along in front of the hotel, heartburn, regurgitation, one out of every six people 
15% of those people may get Barrett's esophagus and that goes on in many people to cancer. So this is a really big problem and a lot of people are simply driving the car backwards so we can fix it. But you have to understand how it works and some other problems and we'll discuss that. Now, a lot of people talk about the MGB like it's something new and of course there's nothing to the MGB. I'm not that smart, I am not clever. I mean, I'm smarter than most bariatric surgeons because they couldn't figure this out, but it's nothing more than routine general surgery. This picture here is something called a Bill Roth II, which was first created in the 18, late 1800s. Okay, and we've been doing it for more than 120 years now, yet a lot of people are still frightened about it or don't understand it or get confused about it. It's nothing more than routine general surgery and worldwide data on the Bill Roth II routinely shows it's successfully performed with good results for over 100 years. And in fact, people who have it have fewer ulcers, less diabetes, less heart disease, less stroke, and all those things because they have this surgery, okay? And if you look over here, here's the MGB. They should see that they're basically the same. A lot of surgeons have trouble understanding that. This is really complicated for them to understand that these two are essentially the same operation. Hello, they're both essentially the same operation. Here it is again, MGB, Bill Roth II. See, right here, Google it. Ask your general surgeon, your gastroenterologist. MGB is a Bill Roth II. It's really that simple. Okay, now, how does the MGB work? In other words, what's the deal here? So we're gonna talk about a couple of things, three things, and we'll talk, try and explain these things. And there's more, but this is a good, introduction to the power of the MGB. So first you should understand that if we go back to that previous uh, um, slide, this we know has what we call dumping. We've known for a hundred years it has dumping. Everybody knows it has that except many bariatric surgeons who can't quite figure this out. Dumping is really easy to understand and really easy to prevent and it has really easy effects. So what we're saying here is there are two types of dumping, cleverly named type one and type two. And what happens is type one, there's too much volume put in. And so the volume sucks in water and dilates the stomach and makes pain and nausea. And the other is based on sugar. And when sugar comes in, it goes up too fast because of the connection. The insulin goes up too high and then the sugar goes too low and then you feel terrible and can pass out and can have complications if you're, for example, driving a car. And then number three is fat malabsorption. There's a lot of misunderstanding on that as well. All these things are well known. We've known them for a hundred years. A lot of general surgeons, bariatric surgeons, medical doctors, gastroenterologists don't understand these things. So it's important for you to understand it, or you can always call me and I can help explain to your doctor or to you what's exactly going on because these techniques, these powers, these effects are what causes the weight loss after MGB. Okay, so let's go over what's called type one dumping, okay? That means you eat so much food that it goes quickly through your esophagus, no problem, goes quickly through the stomach pouch, again, no problem, in contrast to the sleeve, in contrast to the lap band, in contrast to the, U, the Roux and Y, the food goes easily through your esophagus. You probably experience swallowing food. You no, know, it goes right down. The gastric pouch in the MGB is exactly the same. When you swallow, food goes through. After it goes through, it goes then through the esophagus and then through the gastric pouch. And then it's dumped rapidly into the small bowel and that's not what it's supposed to do. The small intestine is expecting the food to hold up in the stomach and be digested in large part before it goes into the small bowel. Because of the new connection, the food dumps directly into the small bowel. And what happens is that food being dumped into the small bowel, if it's enough, begins to take on water and the dry food, particularly certain kinds of food, begin to swell. Just like a dry sponge, they begin to enlarge 
And that is because of what's called osmotic pressure. It sucks in the water from a dry, dry sponge and it begins to swell. That's food swelling as the water joins it. That pulls fluid into the bowel and then the bowel begins to stretch and it stretches so much you feel like it's gonna burst. That leads to severe pain, nausea, and vomiting. So in type one dumping, you can feel terrible. The MGB is designed intentionally, I hope not in a nasty way, to cause you severe abdominal pain if you don't know how to drive the car. If you drive the car backwards, we will crash it. We will hurt you because what we want you to do is eat a small volume of food slowly. And we'll talk a few minutes about what kinds of foods really work well. A lot of food fast will go down quickly, but then it will go into the small intestine and the small intestine doesn't like a lot of food fast. Don't do it. I know you may have been able to do that in the past. You shouldn't do it. Even with a normal stomach, you shouldn't do it because as we'll talk about later, this can cause reflux. You don't want reflux. Don't do this. And the MGB, like a strict grandmother, like a well-built car, it doesn't work if you do it backwards, okay? Type one dumping, don't do it. Don't eat a lot fast. When you look at your plate, if you have a normal dinner plate, less than a quarter of the plate, less than a cup or a half a cup of food each time. If you eat more than that, you face the risk of dumping, especially with different kinds of foods. So again, don't do this. Stop, eat what we call mindfully, slowly, turn off the TV, turn off your phone, stop talking, put your fork or spoon or knife down between bites, chew it and think mindfully that you are nourishing your body, not involved in taking drugs or other pleasurable activities that can lead to addictive behaviors. Relax and then your MGB will serve you well. Turn the car around. Okay, now next is type two dumping. Now this occurs when you eat sweets or some kind of sugar bolus. And when that happens, the sugar goes right down your esophagus, right down the new stomach pouch and right into the small bowel. Okay, when it does that, bad things can happen. A lot of sugar into the small bowel gets immediately absorbed into the bloodstream, okay? When it goes into the bloodstream, the, it, the high sugar level is sensed by the pancreas. The pancreas doesn't like high blood sugar, and so it dumps out a whole bunch of insulin. But there's not a stomach full of sugar, just this sudden rise because the food was dumped quickly into the small intestine. The misunderstanding of how much sugar is coming leads to an overdose of insulin and the rapid rise in blood sugar levels leads to the pancreas insulin rise and the sudden rise of insulin then leads to a sudden low blood sugar because it's too much insulin. And what you get is hypoglycemia. That's weakness, tachycardia. You can faint or pass out. It can be awful. And if you're driving a car, maybe a crash, even death. So don't do it. But now if you see, this is kind of like your strict grandma. She says, I don't want you to eat a lot of sweets. My little grandbaby, a lot of sweets make you fat and sick and diabetic and all those things. Don't do it. And I will be there to help train you to wean you from eating junky sweet foods. Coca-Cola, candy bars, ice cream, these things all have the potential to cause type two dumping, which can be devastating. And so most of our MGB patients learn not to do it. So don't do it. That's one of the mechanisms that the MGB uses to work effectively. Now, the next part is kind of interesting because you and I are mainly water. We do have some fat in us, but we're mostly water. Now, what that means is that when we eat fat, we can't absorb it. We are water and oil, fat, water don't mix. But we do have a capability of digesting fat and bringing it across the lining of the small intestine into our bloodstream. 
And that technique includes bile and other features, but it happens almost all 90% in the first six feet or about two meters of the small intestine. Okay, in the MGB, we bypass the first two meters. So can you guess what happens? If you eat a lot of fat, it doesn't get absorbed. If you have a lot of undigested fat in the first small bowel, that high fat will not be absorbed and then it goes down below and it starts causing bloating, gas, cramps, diarrhea, and all kinds of awful, smelly, stinky bowel movements. So what happens is again, the MGB like the strict grandmother is trying to say, stop it. Stop eating large amounts of fat quickly. And you know what else is good for uh, weight loss? Well, not eating a lot of fat quickly. And you know what else that eating healthy, small amounts of fat and not eating quickly? Well, that's good for your heart, your brain, and many other parts of your physiology, including diabetes. So again, here's the MGB working for you if you understand it. Again, it will be punishing if you do it incorrectly. Don't eat a big greasy hamburger quickly. Okay, so understanding the MGB, living happy and healthy with the MGB. Rule number one, eat slow, small, healthy meals. I recommend six small meals a day. Meal size, usually about one to a half cup of food. Choose low or no fat foods. Let me say it three or four times. Choose low or no fat foods. Choose low or no fat foods. What I'm trying to say is, let me hear you. Choose low or low fat or no fat foods. For example, fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, beans, other foods like that, okay? But again, be warned. If you eat high fat and or high sugar foods, then danger. The symptoms we describe will come to you against your will and it won't make you happy. Take it from 6,000 of my patients. This will not make you happy. What you wanna do then, as we talked about, mindful eating, turn everything off. And 90% plus of the time, choose whole food, plant-based foods, whole plant-based foods. A good example of this is the 2021 American Heart Association Dietary Guidelines, and particularly no sweeteners, no smoothies, no powdered food supplements, no protein supplements. That's a brief guideline to what you should be doing. Okay, now, if you have reflux and you're doing everything right, you might still be wondering, well, what's going on with me and my MGB? And the next part of this talk, which we'll do later, is talking about the surgery itself and how surgical errors by surgeons who have different opinions in mind can sometimes make reflux. But I wanna talk about just the fact that the rest of the world has reflux. So that advice that I gave to MGB patients also works for people who don't have an MGB. And we'll talk about that another time. So. I'll go ahead and stop my sharing and say thanks for listening. I hope that's a brief introduction to how to run your MGB. And uh, we'll see you again soon.